Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of evolving a binary solar system from birth to death. So if you uh, haven't seen the last episode definitely go ahead and check it out before watching this one but if you're all caught up then let's continue. So if you remember last episode two stars we had a lot of ejections as well you can already see it some planets are still barely holding on here it's getting pretty wild some stuff is also already being ejected I mean look at that I mean why is that even still there get rid of that. But, um, yeah, a lot of objects are barely hanging on anymore. The Alpha Centauri A and B stars, they got a little unstable when we had an interstellar traveller as well. So it's been a pretty wild ride so far, but we still have a lot of planets holding on to the inner areas of the systems. So, yeah, looking pretty good. And remember, we did have a lot of uh, star transfers between a lot of the planets. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty wild ride so far. But anyways, let's continue evolving our system. So let's get this time up and let's watch. So if we have a look here, here's Beowulf, actually. Um, we were there. Here previously a planet that used to host or have lifelike conditions but yeah now it's completely ruined there's only water even left it doesn't look like there is yeah look at the state of that it did once have water but not anymore so completely ruined so there's bear wolf oh, it looks like there's a little bit of water still in the north actually that you can see if you look very closely you can see there's a little bit still going on up here but that is all you've got in the north and south poles is that is it so there we go there's bear wolf uh, how are we doing? There's our tidally locked planet. So again, this one's still got patches of oceans on it, but it's not looking good. It's only 50 degrees average, but if we look on the actual map, yeah, it gets a lot hotter than that in the daytime and the, and the very hot at points. Uh, next up, we got this planet. That was a gas world, wasn't it? Yeah. We've got Dorsey. I think this is a world that's currently warming up for lifelike conditions currently. So we'll have to wait and see if this planet can host, has, host the challenge of life. So there's all of our main uh, highlights around Alpha Centauri A at the moment. So moving on to Alpha Centauri B now. It's got a lot of interesting planets around here as well. And I think we actually have more, if I remember right. What's this object here? Aura Pack. So this is one of our random spawns. Look, it's got um, it's got oceans on it. It may have the conditions. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll highlight that so we can uh, come back at a later point. But yeah, that's looking, uh, it's looking really good, this one. Let's give it a slightly increased atmosphere, why not? But yeah, there it is, so Aura Pax, keep an eye on that. See if that has any conditions later on. Um, going to the closest to the star, though, we still have this planet hanging on. So that was one of the minor objects that was spawned in, so yeah, not looking good for this guy whatsoever, being that close to Alpha B. Okay, and then we have Salby over here, another one of the rad, and then we have Kuvo over here. So that's a world that's been uh, uninhabitable for quite a while and never really was habitable at all. So you've got that one there. Then we have Mogo here. So this is all at 137 degrees. It does have oceans, but very, very pale coloured. Not a habitable world at all. Then moving on, we had Akam here. Another one of the random spawns. Then we're taking a jump. We've got Corfos over here. This is a world that's currently a life uh, potential object. Quite warm, but yeah, it has the, uh, has the conditions necessary at the moment. Then we have um, Lorao over here, which is meant to be an all-ocean world, but it's currently frozen up, so it has not got the conditions it needs yet to uh, get all it wants. So, yeah, it's not uh, ATM-wise yet. It's not as, uh, not as bright. And if we put the zone on, it's not in that warmth to get what it needs. And we've got a few more minor objects here. We've got Curio, and then these ones. Yes, that's not anything, uh, anything to really keep an eye of. So, okay. And then we've also got a few more objects uh, on the edges here. So... Without fair ado, let's continue. Let's actually let time evolve big time. So let's uh, go back to Alpha Centauri B, lock onto that. And let's roll. So keep an eye on the orbits as well. Remember, everything here is still constantly changing. So anything could happen at any point. What's this object here? It's one of the gas giants, isn't it? Yeah, it's barely hanging on. So Yeah, and it's a bit dodgy because the Alpha Centauri B is getting closer to Alpha Centauri A because they are on a slightly inclined orbit or eccentric orbit, so the two stars do have different distances from each other at different times. So you can see at this gas giant's orbit has been immensely hurt, and it is going to fly straight in, and probably straight out of the Alpha Centauri B sector here. So if we have a look here, it's going to zoom by Alpha Centauri B. Is it going to survive or not? It is now leaving. It did get some temperature there, but I don't know if it's going to hold on. It looks like it may have just been ejected completely. We'll have to see if it comes back or not. We can see it down. That's That object's also been ruined due to the Alpha Centauri A and B transition period there. So not looking good at all. We've got this object flying by again. Look at that. How's that? Oh, that's got a pretty wild orbit going on as well. So A and B. 
Yeah, this is can this is gonna get pretty wild, so let's watch that apply as it flies past. Oh, it's pretty crazy. I don't know if some of these are just gonna hang on much longer. It looks like down has been completely ejected. That's not coming back. Not good at all. And we've got the Mad Planet Guy gas giant over here. I think that's one of our yeah, one of our other ice giants. That's gone as well. That's definitely not coming back, so we'll get rid of both of those. This one's gone as well. I don't think down's gonna hold on much longer either. This one's not coming back either. So we've lost a lot of our gas objects in here. Not good at all. So let's wait for Alpha A and B to loop back round with each other again. So you can see Alpha B is working its way around Alpha A. So let's watch them as they go past each other one more. Could upset the orbits of the other objects around. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they're ever coming. Uh, yeah, these these guys are gone. They're not. If we go on trails, for instance, I mean, look at that. That one's gone in a full circle there. Look at that. Let's go on trails for a bit and just watch as these uh, play out. So see if any of them are looking like they're going to come back. And meanwhile, while this is all going on, the stuff in the actual solar systems between the two stars could be having some drastic changes of orbits, but we obviously can't really see that at the moment. Hey, look at Alpha A and B go around each other. That's so cool. So, yeah, the binary system as it travels through space. We've got a close flyby here. So it looks like this object may be flying by once more. Another return flight to Alpha Centauri B. So it's going to zoom by once more back into the darkness. It slowly gets darker and darker here. So is that going to hang on again or is it... Oh, it's getting even worse. That's around Alpha Centauri A now. Okay. Interesting. It'd be cool if it could somehow lock onto Alpha Centauri A, but you can see its orbit. It's just not having a good time. And it's just constantly changing. It just cannot get a break. So, yeah, not good at all. This object's also gone at this point. Down is still hanging on somehow. But, yeah, I'm not expecting it to ever return. So also remember the stars are still traveling through space themselves. They're actually heading away from where down is. So down is gone as well. So Alpha Centauri A and B is what's all that remain now. Flying by closely, but yeah, there you are. Okay, so. Pretty interesting stuff. But obviously, as they're traveling through space, I think that's finally been ejected. Yeah, that that is not coming back. That is gone. So there we are. But. We're traveling through space a lot, and this is one thing we've never done. So we're going to have another interstellar traveler, but we haven't had one of this scale before. So if I go into this, we're going to go for something fairly large. Something in a star like Pollux, maybe. No, hang on, not Pollux. Um, where are we? Um, I'm going to go with Antares, which is it's quite a big deal. It's quite a large star. So I don't know if this is a good idea. Maybe we'll go something more similar like Rigel. Maybe you know, it's a fairly big star, but we're going to have something fly by. So it doesn't else you have to fly through the system, but it's just a neighbouring passing star. Where A for Alpha, A and B. So what direction? So they're heading... So they're still in orbit, aren't they? Yeah, okay. So yeah, we're going to have Rigel. So science is quite big, so we don't really go with big luminous stars. Normally we go just go with brown dwarf. So we're actually having a full-on star here. And we're gonna have it fly by the our, our Alpha Centauri system. So we're gonna shoot it there. So we got Rigel nearby. And remember, Rigel. It's quite a big luminous. So it could upset our systems big time. And what is going on with Aura Packs here? That's a pretty wild orbit. So if we go back to orbits here. Okay, but as we can see, now Rigel has entered our nearby star space. It could have some big consequences for all of the objects in the system, Alpha Centauri A and B, because Rigel is a bright object. So it could have, yeah, serious consequences for a lot of these objects in this in this case. So we can see here is Corphos. So we can see it's receiving huge amounts of lights from uh, from Rigel there, and you can see its temperature is 195 degrees now. Earlier it was only 50. So Rigel is having a huge, huge increase there on temperature. And actually, speaking of that. If we go to Lorao here, this world should in theory be warming up big time now. And it looks like it is. You can see the surface is starting to show up through the ice. It's at 18 degrees Celsius now because of Rigel's presence warming it up. It is, everyone is inside Rigel's zone already. So we can see this is going to get pretty wild. And if we let time advance... Actually, well, I'm going to throw a save in just in case we do have any issues with Rigel being a nuisance here. So we're going to save and update just in case it's been a while since we saved. So... Let's do that. We're going to see if the nearby blue dominant star will have any effect on our star's orbits or anything like that. But we're going to see as Rigel slowly passes by. It is approaching. You can see. And we can see Lorao is melting. 
Look at that. It's 50 degrees now as Rigel gets closer. So it is going to see some oceans for the time being. So I think, yeah, well, I don't know why it's still frozen. We're just going to manually melt that because that is how it should look right now. So we'll see. Loral here. 170 degrees. We are passing right by Rigel now. It's going to upset both our stars' orbits completely as it flies by. Look at Alpha Centauri A and B. Rigel is having enormous effects on both of these guys. It could have serious consequences for our systems as it slings past. And that may have destroyed our binary system completely here. So that could have some big consequences to our nearby uh, interstellar traveler there. But I don't know if... Does it really... Do we really continue with a broken system. I mean, I think that's a little too much for our system to handle, but it can, in theory, happen. I mean, look at look at the state of this object now. Look at that. It's completely ruined. This was all frozen a minute ago. So, yeah, I think Rigel, I think it's too much for our system to handle, so we're going to actually have to backtrack and forget that ever happened. So, um, yeah, it, let's just take that as a possible scenario. That's only a possible scenario, so we're going to have to... Uh... Unfortunately, Rigel is too much. For our system to handle, so we're gonna have to go back to what we were. So forget that ever happened, unfortunately. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I was hoping it would do a little more than rip our system to shreds. So I guess we'd have to fly it by at a first. So let's actually redo the event. So we're gonna have it fly by faster and at a further distance. So there's our system there. We're gonna shoot Rigel over here. And it's also traveling faster. So Rigel, nearby star. But yeah, that's actually gonna have a longer distance. Let's see if this will work. So again, I'm going to uh, do the same as what we did before. Just going to keep saving. But I do want to have this interstellar traveller actually run by our simulation and have it pass. So we'll have to see how Rigel uh, deals with it. So let's just continue. Yeah, we'll, f we'll speed up Rigel's speed as well. Just so um, we can get this encounter over and done with. So let's uh, increase. So Rigel is, is coming fast. We can see its zone. It's a shooting star from somewhere else in the galaxy here. So let's see if our Alpha Centauri system's will have any issue with the Rigel flyby, the shooting star Rigel. Look at that, that actually does look really cool. So there it is, Rigel, nearby star. Now, will it have any effect on our system? So it's flying by fast, there you go. So it, it will affect our objects as it flies by here. So there it goes, it shoots past. And let's see if it had any sort of effect. That's what I wanted to sort of get the first time, but I don't think I got the speed high enough. So there's Rigel, gone. So did it? Yeah, did it warm up any? I mean, it would have it would have warmed up stuff to an extent, but obviously it's going to freeze up again since it has flown by. But yeah, let's see if it had any effect on our stars' orbits of each other. So you can see, yeah, maybe maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But yeah, there we go. So there we are. Okay, interesting stuff. Now following Rigel, we're going to have one more little object. We're going to have just a simple gas giant. It's a normal, simple gas giant that has just been ejected from somewhere else in space. We're just going to go this random object here. And I think we already used that one, didn't we? This is, we'll, go, we'll go this object here. So it's going to travel very slow speed. Maybe it'll get captured by one of our stars. So it's going to fly by there. So we're going to shoot it in this direction, I think. Uh, go back to trail. So we're sort of heading in which direction we're heading for. Okay, so I'm going to fire our gas giant in this direction. Oh, hang on. Where's he going? He's going the wrong way! Or is he? I don't know what he's doing. But there you go. There's another another object that our stars may pass by. We may be able to pick up. But I do not know, honestly. Actually, a little bit of a re-sketch. Yeah, that's better. That's how it looks a little better. Probably something like that. I don't know. It's trying, I'm going to try and make it sort of capture it. But it's quite hard to sort of do at this velocity. So, I mean, there you go. But... Yeah, say an object that's following Rigel for some reason. There it is. It's going to shoot by our system. I don't know if it will get captured or not, but there it is. So another interstellar passer. But yeah, there we go. I think that'll be the final one for this uh, system because we've had a little, little lot. So, whoa, oh. Whoa, what happened there? I don't know what I did, but we saved, so it's fine. Well, that was very weird. <laughs> what happened there? Well, I guess we get to replay the Rigel event, actually, so... What if Rigel was so like we did with with the last simulations? And I don't, I do want to try and make it interesting. I don't want to do it too over the complicated. So there it is. This object is actually orbiting Rigel as this takes place. So there we go. So Rigel is now going to fly by once more with an object in orbit. And we'll see if this sort of has any effect on our uh, on our system. See if it gets captured or not. I have to wait and see. So we'll wait for Rigel to arrive. So. It may take a while though, because Rigel is, yeah. Oh, I don't know actually. Uh, hang on, I think what we need to do is 
So that's in orbit of that. I think we need to speed up Rigel first before we do that. So, for instance, I want to do this. So, there you go. so Rigel is now sped up. And now I want to add that orbit around Rigel. So, there we go. So it's approaching. Um, and there we go. So, what I need to do is 500 AU away. So, it's a quite a big system. It's caught by Rigel's gravity, though. So, we're going to see if that anything happens there but there we go this is the final time we're doing this because yeah i do want to progress time because we're just repeating the same event really with a bit of uh, a bit of magic of the sandbox and doing what we want to do so there goes so we've got that saved no more messing around we're gonna let this run out so there is rigel there is his planet okay there we go so we'll see if this has any effect at all that it is approaching closer so we will we'll actually we'll go to Larau actually to keep an eye on its temperature so there it is Okay, so we're going to keep an eye on you. I want to see if we get any effect from Rigel's presence as it does fly by. Look at Rigel go. Ooh. <laughs> so you can see the temperature on here. It's still pretty sitting normal. Rigel is getting close. There's that gas giant. So we've just flown past it. So there he goes. I don't know if anything's going to happen with that. There's Rigel shooting by. So we can see it. Lorel has warmed up. It is at 80 degrees as Rigel flies by. So in theory, it should look like that again. So there you go. So there's Rigel shooting past. Bye-bye, Rigel. And I don't know if its planet got grabbed by anything. Unfortunately, I think they are gone for good. So, unfortunately, no interstellar travellers were captured in this interaction. So, yeah, there we go. But now let's get rid of them once and for all. And let's continue with progressing time. So, there we go. Let's get that saved. So, unfortunately, no more interstellar travellers. So we've had our fair share of those um, in last episode and today. So, yeah, we had the solar system fly by last episode. And then today we had Rigel on one object. So... Okay, slow down time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so back to our main stars, though. So, yeah, this one's all frozen up again, unfortunately. No temperature. But it's time to evolve the stars themselves. So, Alpha Centauri B is now getting bigger. So, we're going to slowly increase to 1.4 or 1.5 suns. Luminosity is now passing 1 sun, 1.17 suns. If we go to Alpha Centauri A, same deal over here. Looks like Dorsal's warmed up a bit, but yeah, Alpha A. It's going to get up to two suns in size. Luminosity is getting bigger. We're going up to 2.3 suns. So Alpha Centauri A is evolving faster. It is a larger star. It's logical that it would burn through its hydrogen fuel faster. So Alpha A is, although it's the same age as B, it is going to burn through its material quicker because it has got more mass. So there we go. So now, continuing on, press play. It's time for our system to evolve more as uh, the stars are brighter. So now if we go to Core Force here, don't think this world is going to last much longer. It's not in the Haspel zone anymore. It is going to start warming up, unfortunately. We can see it's at 52 degrees now. If we look at its uh, composition here, so the hottest areas are 106, but even the colder areas, yeah, you have to be at the poles now. The other areas are getting slightly hot, so yeah, not looking good for this object. We see the water is drying up as well. I'm sure there was more water on that the other day. So this is the life world at the end of its sort of life reign in a way. As it, now it's going to enter the dark, sort of uh, the death ages as the star gets brighter. How's Lorel doing? This is our ne the next planet out, potentially the Earth-like world of the future. So let's see if that temperature slowly starts to warm up as time evolves here. So we're going to have to keep an eye on Corphos as well, because obviously we've got to let the simulation run for the temperature to take part. So we're going to slowly see as Lorel warms up here. So if we look at his stats, even the coldest point is at minus 20 currently. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But anyways, we'll, we'll come back to those guys in a bit. We're going to head to Alpha Centauri A and see what is going on over here. Because Alpha A is also a lot more powerful than it once was. So how are we doing here? So this is our tidy locked object. I'm sure it's probably not looking too good on the front face. I mean, it must be getting seriously hot here now. 422 degrees. It's going to probably start getting molten soon. So there is that. How's Beowulf doing? This was a world, again, this was once lively in the early days of this system but it doesn't look like it will be much longer you can see 118 degrees no more water at all by the looks of it is there any water left or is it still hanging on or is it complete it's all gone no more water completely evaporated now so it's not looking good at all here i think the blue is slowly going to fade off no more no more blue no more water it's lost all of it and so now it really is a world that's starting to uh turn into that more uninhabitable greenhouse effect objects so yeah, not looking good and I think any lights on it would have been long gone at this point so yeah world no longer looking good at all so Beowulf once a life world not anymore so that's now orange 
How's Dorsal doing? Next planet out. This was also the other Haspel world around this star. So, looking good. Looking very, very good. Very nice indeed. It's got oceans, minus 6 degrees. Not too shabby. Its hottest point is 86, actually. So, it's uh, it's got a wide range of temperature. So, you can see. I mean, the hottest points are... Yeah, the red air, red zone. So, the high elevation, the lower elevation. Very, very nicely cold temperature here. So, quite a mysterious world with its temperature gauge. But... Yeah, all of the green zones, I mean, they're nice and cool. So you want to be sitting sort of in the yellowy zones, so around this area here. Yeah, so you want to be roughly in the yellow zones. But obviously the red zones are too hot, so pretty wild stuff. And remember, the star is receiving light from Alpha Centauri B as well, so in theory there could be effects from both stars once the stars get even brighter, so pretty wild. Moving further out, we have our other gas giant here. How are you doing? That's pretty gassy looking, but yeah, nothing too much going on there. And then we have Vulcans, minor bats of Vulcan here. So we can see that this world is currently uh, minus 52 degrees as well. Not much going on there. Okay. So going back to Alpha B there. Whoa, what's happened here? Fawn, that wasn't like that earlier. Okay, that's not looking good. There's also lots of particles coming from somewhere. Now I wonder where that is. Now I'm assuming it is... Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, so it's this object here. Closest object to Alpha B. It's not looking good at all now. Getting very hot. Material is being lost. 600 degrees. Very dangerously hot now. Obviously, it's tidally locked. 1700 degrees on the front face inside. So, not good at all. Okay, but anyways, heading back to Corphos. How are we doing over here? 116 degrees. 69. Uh, yeah, that, that's not looking good. And then back to Larao here. Minus 37. Let's continue to watch as this guy hopefully warms up. Let's time evolve it nice and quickly here. And let's see where we roughly end up. So it looks like it's averaged out at minus 30 degrees. So still not warm enough for Loral to warm up yet. So even at its hottest point. No, it's still below below zero at its hottest. How's Corfos doing over here? It's 137. It's going up to 80. It's still warming up. Not good at all. So we're getting a lot of greenhouse effect here. So I think as uh, things warm up, I think the infrared is going to slowly increase. So where was our infrared button? Oh, it's already high, but maybe the albedo drops. So there's less water to reflect it. So it really is hammer time here now. It looks like the oceans have dissolved almost completely. Ooh, they're still hanging on, but yeah, it's not looking good. Maybe the atmosphere is going to slowly get more murky. So there you go. Maybe the uh, maybe the clouds get thicker. So yeah, not looking good. So well, again, another life candidate that's uh, been uh, ruined by time in a way. So there we go. All right, how's Mogo doing? This was a world that was uh, did have oceans at one point, but yeah, it's looking pretty uh, pretty ruined. I see a lot of clouds going on, not much on the surface. There's not there's any oceans left, is there? Yeah, they're they're completely gone. So that's a world that's just going to get ruined as well. But anyways, let's continue. Right, uh, yeah, rock onto the star. Let time evolve. Let the orbits play out a bit. So maximum speed. We can run the simulation a lot faster than we could previously because also we've lost a lot of objects. This fawn object's not looking good as it flies by Alpha Centauri A and B. Is it going to have a star transfer? Oh, it looks like it almost did. It has. Okay. So a star transfer there. So it's now an orbit of Alpha A. Okay. So let's see if Alpha B can pick it up again or maybe it won't. But I'll see. Once Alpha B gets close to Alpha A, we could see the Haspel zone start to merge in the future. So this could get pretty wild. So the Fawn's orbit is being stretched out by the presence of the second star here. So this is getting pretty wild now as we are starting to enter the uh, late main sequence stage of our two stars. Again, we'll throw in a save as we uh, start to evolve our stars once more. So we've passed the size of the sun. We've passed their present day forms of Alpha A and B. So now we are going into uh, the end of the main sequence. So... Pretty well. Look at Fawn, it's hanging on, but I don't know. I think Alpha B has completely ruined its orbit. It's just been ejected out completely. That is not coming back. So that's a world that will escape this system's doom. So that's definitely gone. That's completely ejected. So now we've cleared out all of the excess dwarf planets and stuff orbiting further away. They're all gone. It's now the stars and their planets. There's no excess objects getting launched around. Everything is nicely orbiting its star. So pretty cool. But anyways, let's save again just so we don't have to delete that if we ever have to go back. So now, Alpha A. It's time to increase once more. Okay, so maybe maybe we'll start getting more and more red as well. Mm. So go to red. So it looks like that normally. Maybe we have a slight 
more red shade start to appear. So, you know, it's starting to get into that red giant face. Um, and yeah, here we go. So we're going to double up radius, straight up, double up on everything there. So that is getting serious now. So that's going to hurt a lot of things. And then Alpha Centauri B, same story with you. With radius, we're getting straight double up. Luminosity, again, double up. So that is going to be some serious punishment for the objects here. So we can see that Lorau is now entering the red zone. So has it passed its heyday? Have we skipped too far into the future to see it in its good point? Let's see here. No, it looks like it's still, uh, still hanging on there. But I think now is the time. I don't know why it's still frozen. It Surely it shouldn't be frozen at that. So I think we're going to do a manual interference. It should be like this at this point. 19 degrees. There you go. That's how it should be looking. So there you go. So it is weld in its heyday at the moment. So it's looking good. So it needed that red giant to warm it up. Give it its earth-like stats. There you go. Looking good. Nice blue atmosphere with it as well. Yeah, it's a nice looking world. Very nice indeed. Got some city lights, blue city lights on it as well. So that is your Earth flight candidate at this point in this system's life. So there you go. If we head back to the previous Earth flight planet, so that was core force. I'm, I'm assuming bad things are happening. 167 degrees there. Now that is not looking good at all. And obviously the light from Alpha Centauri 8 is starting to reach here fairly easily now. So there it is. So if we look underneath, yeah, the oceans have kind of crept to the poles now. So again, that world's not looking too good. So maybe the clouds are starting to get a little more misty and horrible as well. So, yeah, not looking good. Maybe the surface sort of drying up to a more dried look. So you can see again the evolution of this system and this object. Not looking good. And I think anything closer than Corphos is also going to be in a real hard time now. Mogo, how are you doing? You can see a 299 degrees here. So that's not looking good. Uh, even closer, we've got Carvol here. That's Yeah, that's molten. Molten hot now. Oh dear. So that's a world completely slaughtered by the star now. If we look at it, it's, uh, yeah, ooh. And then obviously if we go to all the way to here. Oh, oh, oh 2,000 degrees. It is seriously dangerous here. As the star has got older and bigger. And I think at this point, an object of this size, I don't think it's going to last. I think it only makes sense it's either going to fall into the star or it's just going to dissolve. So I think... That's what's going to happen here. It's going to fall very close. I think Rouge Limit should be able to just shred this thing at this point. There you go. That is not looking good. Dangerously close, but I think just a bit of manual. Look how... Oh! Is it going to go in? Oh, it is going to go in. It's going to fall into the star. So we can see in its final moments here, the star's pulled it in with solar, solar stuff. Solar winds, I believe, and all that. Its orbit has failed. It is going to go into the star. You can see it's really dissolving fast now, so... Whoa. That's a big. That's gonna cause a collision. I don't know if the star. What's gonna happen to the star here? But, oh, it's gonna go in. Oh no. Oh. Oh man. That's not good. It's gone. It's fallen into the star. Oh oh. Oh right. Stars gobbled him up. But I think it. I think that was the point where that object shouldn't be there anymore. So that's gone. Al Centauri B has eaten it up. So nothing left. It's just been become part of the star now. Any material left. So there we go. Okay. Now let's actually simulate some time. So A and B zones. They're close. They are close to hitting each other. Alpha A and B. Look at that. Okay. So they're, even at their closest points, the zones are not close enough to hit each other yet. But they are getting there. Ooh. Ho, ho. Okay. How's that aura pack doing? That one's... Uh, this one had like, a lotion on it, didn't it? I mean, it looks like it's got what it needs, but I mean, it's got quite a weird orbit going in and out at the moment. Let's actually have a closer look. So let's see what's going on here. So is it actually an ocean at the moment? I think it's all... Oh, no, no, it's gone. It's lost its water. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Had a nice blue atmosphere as well, so that's not looking good. I think it's going to lose that blue then. There we go. Looks more, more appropriate. So there you go. Ah, oh, that's a shame. How's the row doing? So this is the only place of life at the moment. It's got polar caps and everything. Look at that. Hey. So it's at a nice 19 degrees. It is warming up though with both stars. So the hottest point is 42 degrees cold. It's just got a nice... And it's ocean, remember. So we'll see the star under that ocean. It will be cooler. So yeah, it's a very nice looking world at the moment. It's got what it needs. Maybe maybe um, its surface would slowly evolve a bit of greenery. So maybe, maybe it would have a slightly more uh, nice look to it. Something like that maybe. 
So a nice tropical beach world. So looking good. Very nice indeed there. Okay, going back to Alpha A, I don't think there's anything. Is there anything even hatable around here? There's Bear Wolf. Look at that now. It's looking good. Dorsal, that was the Earth like the planet around here, wasn't it? But even Dorsal, 57 degrees, I think it just hit there. 56, 57. So, yeah, not looking good. So, again, this one has also passed its field day. And, yeah, now it's starting to get hotter. So, not looking good. So, it's losing its nice, uh, nice shade, I think. So, it's going to slowly sort of fade. That was here, it's changing as its time's evolving, so interesting stuff there. Okay. Right, so now let's set time and continue once more. I want both stars to be at their closest point to each other before we do the next evolution. So here we go. So right about there. Okay, so we're going to pause there, we're going to save. And we're going to go into the final evolution stage of today's video, so let's do that. So we're now into probably the red giant stage, I'd probably say. So yeah, past the main sequence, we're now entering the big stages as things get bigger and brighter quicker. So I think we need another double up. It's a radius. Double the radius. Luminosity doubled. Alpha A has now mixed with Alpha B's luminosities. And they are now covering each other. Alpha B, again, radius. You're getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Alpha B, I think you're... Uh, gonna slowly look a little more red yourself so there you go so now the zones are crossing oh my god so that's looking really wild so alpha a bigger more menacing looking there we go and alpha b i think Lorau, he's not gonna hold on anymore it's now receiving probably good light from both stars as we can see here yeah, it is so we're gonna slow look at the red oh see the red starlight on it's a slow down time Let's see what happens now you're getting light from both stars fairly close together. So there's one one red giant and then the second red giant. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I'm going to slowly watch as this temperature gets upset by probably two stars. So keep an eye on that. Let's do this. There we go. Keep an eye on the water. And the water depth. So keep an eye on that as uh, time evolves. But that ice ain't gonna last, I tell you that. There's no way that's gonna last, so uh, there we go. Corforce, how you doing? I mean yeah, this isn't this isn't gonna look good at all. So let's let time go. Oh, it's really ramping up the heat now. Ooh, <laughs> god damn. So we can see Lorau, it's 104 degrees now on here. So that's not looking good either. Ho oh, ho! It's getting wild. 250 degrees at Corfos now. That's bad. That's very bad. But if we go even closer, Mogo, how are you doing? I mean, 331 degrees there. Ooh. Kurvo, how are you doing? Even closer to the star. Yeah, that's not looking good. 500 degrees. Salby here. Only 258. Must be quite reflective. Going to Alpha Centauri A here, so the real killer star. So how are we doing here? This is our tidy lock world. And as we can see, finally, the Molten Rock has appeared. The ocean's not looking good, but if we look on its uh, surface stats, look underneath it, yeah, ooh. So I'm not bothered about the water depth, I just want to see that. Yeah, look at the maps there. So these are the two worlds of interest at the moment, I'd say, for changes. So you can see it's pretty cold. On the other side, minus 152, so the twilight zone is roughly where you want to be sitting if you have any chance of surviving here, right on the edge of the ice. But, I mean, what's the point? I mean, just evacuate at that point. Oh, but yeah, that's not looking good. Oh dear, oh dear. How's Lorau doing? I mean, surely that's going to slowly, that water's going to disappear now. There's no way that can hang on there. How's our other gas giant doing? This one should probably start receiving temperature, surely. 81 degrees, okay. Door cell. This was the other hatchable world around Alpha A. We'll get all of its uh, bits as well. Keep an eye on those. But yeah, this isn't going to look too good either. So, look at the surface temperature change. Whoa. What is going on there? The aerial map as well. Again, the water is slowly going to disappear here. I think there's a lot of particles. Let's just delete particles. I actually run a little faster. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, not looking good. There's Vulcan. How are you doing? That's nice and cool at the moment still. Beowulf, again, a world that was once a life world. Completely ravaged now. But yeah, there we are. So the red giant phase has truly started with both stars. Also, the Alpha A is evolving faster. It is bigger and brighter. So it is inferior, slightly ahead in the process. But 
Yeah, looking uh, pretty well. Look at the route. Look at um, this one. Look at the ice change. That's cool. And here it is. Here, let's keep an eye on that. Oh, keep an eye on the ice. Whoa. But that's slowly evolving around, so pretty cool. Slowly speed up. Look at that. That's so cool the way that works. How's that? How is Loral still surviving? Interesting. So it's just sticking at 100 degrees, but it still has some cooler ocean areas. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Get Alpha Centauri be sling around. Look at that. Whoa. Yeah, that's cool. So here we are. Loral. So the only Earth world left. Yeah, it's going to start losing that water soon. So let's close all these for now. Okay. Slow down time because we are running at a good simulation speed here. So here it is. So, so yeah, that's, that's getting pretty warm. So I think the greenery, unfortunately, would kind of fade away here. So it's kind of going more of a deserty. At this point, it's not going to be more of a desert look, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's looking more, uh, looking more sort of hostile already. So yeah, I think that's definitely the appropriate look to it. Is that's what it looks like underneath the water now. Look at that. So if you turn all this off, put the water on and off. So you can see underneath, yeah, not looking too hot. But yeah, I definitely think a desert appearance is probably the right way to go with this now. So still got the oceans, but you know, that temperature's going to scorch the land. The ocean is obviously underneath the ocean. The cold, the further down you go, the colder and inferior you get. But the surface doesn't get any water protection, so it's going to be very, very hot. So Laurel, the last hope of life. That's all that's left. There's no other worlds past this in either star systems for any life to really work, so not good. How's this world doing? This one's been quite a, just a world that we haven't really paid much attention to, so it's just a very dusty red Mars-like world, isn't it? Yeah, not much going on here. Yeah, it does look very similar to Mars, and it looks like a Mars-Venus hybrid, so let's uh, keep an eye on that and give it a nice little red trail. That's effectively the Mars object. Huh, interesting stuff. Aura packs, how are you doing? That was a world. Yeah, this one's probably not going to have much of a good time when it shoots by its star like that, so. Pretty wild stuff. So it'll sling by, get hotter in temperature. Okay, go farther by again, okay. How are you doing, fittiness over here? What's going on here? This is a world that doesn't really have much go on this whole system. It's just been there, hasn't it? Just a, it's just a hot rock. Not really much. So with not much appearance at all, it's just it's just hot. So there you go. Maybe out of nowhere a mysterious steam atmosphere appears. Not very bright. Not very big atmosphere, but maybe just a just out of nowhere. A mysterious sort of steamy look appears. A white atmosphere. No clouds, but a steamy appearance. Just give it a little more personality there. Curio, how are you doing? What's this one? And that, again, another world that just has nothing really going on for it, so... Yeah, pretty weird. But yeah, there's not really much we can do to this, uh... Make it anything sort of unique. It's just, uh, another, again, another hot rock. I'm not sure I like the colours on it, though. We could probably change those a bit, but... Oh. I am on Curio, aren't I? Yeah. Why can't I change the colours? Oh, I can. So maybe it starts to get a little more brownish as it's slowly getting scorched out bit more personality to it I guess obviously the colors are enhanced because of the starlight so you know it's pretty interesting it'll give it a slightly more sort of brownish look I guess give it a dis distinguish it out a bit what's this one here oh something's losing material what's all that oh it's one of the objects in the inner 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 system uh, okay who's smoking up then who is it is it this one Something is losing material. Oh, it's this one. It's cool, though. It's losing material. Okay. You can, I'm not surprised. Look at the state of that. It was never a friendly world to begin with, but now the star really is scorching him hot. I mean, look how big it is. So that's pretty wild. Look at the clouds behind it as well. They look cool with both stars lighting up. So you can see it's losing a lot of stuff. I think we can get rid of all the water at this point. It's just to stop the particles. So there it is. But yeah, that's a world completely destroyed now. Get the lights. No more lights there. So yeah, very, very menacing red atmosphere going on it as well. I think maybe some thick clouds and storms and all sorts of God knows what are going on here. Not going to look too nice. So yeah, The cloud of pasty is maxed. So there you go. It does look pretty vicious. Maybe the atmosphere could get a slight thicken as well. So it really gets dangerous here. So oh, that does look menacing, doesn't it? Very glowy. Very, very glowy. So there you go. But yeah, guys, I think we'll finish off 
here for today's episode of Evolving a Binary from Birth to Death. So I think next episode will be The System's Fate Part 3, so stay tuned for next week as we will see the stars go into the big, big, the big, big sizes. So, I mean, if we were to compare it to the Red Giant Sun, for instance, we still have a lot more evolution to do. This is the Red Giant Sun. So it's going to get to around this size eventually for both stars. They probably will get this big with a big luminosity of that. So the luminosity will cover both star systems completely. But yeah, we're going to expect something around this size. So pretty wild stuff. But again, stay tuned for next week where we will see that action take place. So there we are, guys. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, hit that like button. Subscribe for more. Help us in the journey to 26,000 subscribers. We are so close to it, guys. We've had a real huge increase through August and um, September so far. So massive thank you to you all for that. And yeah, guys. Yeah, hope you, hope you, um, let's see. Yeah, see, grab that big like. Oh, actually, yeah, 50, 60 likes. Let's go for 60 likes. Yeah, why not? And yeah, that was said and done, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.